Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful day to be a farmer. Um, I've been watching a lot of Grey's Anatomy recently um, in all my spare time, you know? And before surgery, Derek Shepard always says, it's a beautiful day to save lives. So you know what? It's a beautiful day to be a farmer, you guys. Um, if you hear the DR trimmer in the background, somewhere over here, um, uh, we've hired my brother, Ethan, to do some jobs around the farm this summer. So you'll be seeing a lot more of him. Good job, Ethan. Keep it up. Obviously, it's a very sunny day. It's warm, bright, no wind, so it's a spray day. Um, so I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I get sent a lot of kind of awesome stuff in the mail at my P.O. box. And this morning, I was reaching for my coffee cup. I grabbed this. I went to take a sip, but I was like, oh, that's, that's not right. <laughs> this is what my coffee was in this morning. I, I finished it. It is a cup that is designed to look like a filter, and I just think that's the, that's the most clever thing ever. I, I just thought I'd show this with you guys. All right, back to work. <laughs> Ethan, Dad, and I just loaded our Miller Nitro 4315 sprayer full of chemicals. Um, I usually do it in time lapse because when we load chemicals, we try to do it uh, slowly and methodically so that we don't put any of the wrong chemicals. We put the right amount and we put them in the right order so that they mix well in the tank. Um, and I would like to say that I did a five hour training course last summer and got my, I'm like a certified chemical applicator that's what it is for private land um, and so I can actually handle all these chemicals and spray them and transport them and stuff but, and now dad's gonna go spray and I hmm, have quite a bit of homework to do so while he goes out and sprays a quarter because um, there's a 1600 gallon tank on the sprayer and we put on 10 gallons an acre of our mix I am going to be working on homework and I'll send Ethan out to like work on the planner or something before we put it away there's the sprayer in action. He's lowering the boom as he's getting his auto steer set up. Right now he's spraying around the pivot. So he's just gonna go right up next to it and then back up. It's a 120 foot boom. That thing is huge. And back to my quiz. So it's only lunchtime, but I kind of think it's already time to change into shorts. I got a new way to do it. Simple as that. While dad is spraying out that load, I wanted to say, I'm wearing my Laura Farms tank top here. And because it's so nice and warm outside, as you can see, I'm starting to get my summer color in my cheeks um, and on my shoulders. Everything on my website is 20% off. I'm doing a Memorial Day sale um, from now until Saturday, or no, Monday, May 31st, 2021. That's Memorial Day. Um, so that's the end of the sale. And then that was also the last day that a portion of every sale will go to the Farmers Veteran Coalition. Um, so yeah, that's just my little PSA and a little update on how my school is going. <laughs> And the beast arrives home. I mean the sprayer, not dad. I love dad. The sprayer though, man, it is straight wicked looking. Now it is time to reload. All right, so instead of doing a time lapse for this chemical fill, I will do a little bit more of a, an in-depth look at what we're doing. So uh, here, are two big tanks just full of water. We have a hydrant here that's turned on all the time. There's a hose that's snaked all the way up there, back there. So as soon as these starts emptying, and you can watch it in the videos, it starts emptying as, see that, we turn that little banjo nozzle on, 
water runs through here with this pump up into the tank. So whenever we're filling chemicals here, water is coming with the chemicals mixing in. So as soon as water starts draining from these tanks, it starts getting filled immediately from this hydrant. Um, the first thing that we're going to put into this mix, don't mind all our uh, Dawn dish soap here. Everyone got so mad when I cleaned my car with Dawn dish soap, but we use Dawn dish soap for everything. So what I'm going to do is uh, open up these bags of ammonium sulfate right here. We do this first because that's our water conditioner. Um, and so what I do is I, well, we're going to start the pump, but it's really loud. So I just turn on this little flip switch here and this starts filling up with water from this tank. And I fill this in. It's a little crystally sugar looking thing. Pour it in here. And then as soon as it's all mixed in, I push this down right here. Ooh, which flips this switch. And there's so much water pressure from this tall tank that it immediately pushes water up in there. And then it will start moving all of that water conditioner in through the hose, out through here, and up where we've connected the hose into the tank. Then after that, we put in all our other things. Here, putting in some of this, some of this, it's really just like a big concoction. So we have a recipe written down, or at least that's what I call it, for all the things that we're going to be put into our mix. And every mix is different. So right now, today, dad is spraying seed corn. And so we just have to be really particular because there's some chemicals that seed corn are susceptible to. So we have to be very careful that like Roundup, for example, um, isn't anywhere in our mix because that would kill our crops and that would be very bad. As we load the sprayer, we turn it on so that all the chemicals and water can be agitating as we fill and mixing up. We also have this little clear plastic tube on the outside of the tank and that's a fill indicator so we can see how much more water we need to put in versus where we're at in our recipe and how many more chemicals we have to put in. Um, as you can see from behind me, some chemicals we buy in bulk because we use a lot of them They're in these big chemical totes. But then other chemicals we just buy in two and a half gallon jugs because we don't use that much of them. And just like that, the beast is loaded up and ready to head out to spray another field. And I'm back to homework. So today I'm parking the planter in the shed. Oh, there goes Laura. Wave at Laura. Have a good day. Okay, you too. So to do that, we got to move the old truck. Oh, look at that, started first try. Now she's running. So I got the planter unhooked. It's all blocked up, parked like a like it. So now, looks so much cleaner back there. Well, not the window, but there's a ton of wires and hydraulic hoses. And now I'm gonna use the new Yankum rope to get the forklift out. It is buried up to the frame in the corner there. We'll use the tractor to pull it out nice and smooth. I got her all hooked up. I know this is not the exact application this rope was designed for, slow speed pulling with a high power tractor, but this rope is much easier to handle than the chain, so we'll see. I'm just going to worry about the forklift hitting the wall. I got the window closed for safety. We're just creeping along here and we'll see what happens. It's a pretty long rope. Stretching out. Stretching, stretching, stretching. Oh man. That thing's got a lot of stretch to it. Just like that, she popped right out. Now this is a really heavy, big, old forklift. Uh, I'm 8,000 pounds maybe. It's really heavy. 
and it was really stuck in there. And that rope just yanked it right out. Just like to say, yank them rope. This little soft shackle worked pretty good. I thread it through that little hole and that's awesome. Definitely be using that more. I don't see if this thing fires up. Tank's almost empty. squirrel who's toting an entire corn cob. Look at that guy go. <laughs> now that I got the planter put away, I'm putting on a center drive for a pivot. I started this the other day and uh, must have got tired of doing it. I didn't finish. Anyway, so I'm out here today finishing up. Getting the U-joints on, getting the motor mounted up itself. Got all the wiring done. Got one more U joint done, then I'm gone. So it's almost lunchtime. I'm getting hungry, and that's a wrap. She is all done. Just gotta clean up my tools, and then I'm gonna go pick a few weeds out with the old shovel. Well, I came back out. I started the pivot, to make sure it's phased correctly, and look at that, looking like a charm. I'm digging out. They're called poison hemlock, and they just—they're tough plants. And they just—the spray knocks them back, but doesn't kill them if you don't get them just right. So I'm digging them out. Here's a little update on our corn. Looks like we're at V3, got three collars. Looking pretty nice. Nice and green. Starter fertilizer's working well weeds yet. At least in the corn. There's a few out in the beans. But that'll get sprayed again. Here's a little update on the soybeans. I'm going to the junkyard but I have a little problem. The trailer's a little back heavy so it's uh, up in the air and the loader tractor's gone so I gotta figure out how to get this down. And we're back at the junkyard. Using the magnet to pull those well casings up. It has been a beautiful day at the farm. Um, I hope you guys learned a little bit more about what our spraying operation looks like. Um, I know I enjoy showing you guys stuff like this and it also kind of helps me solidify that I know what I'm talking about when I can explain it to you guys. Like you really know something if you can teach it to somebody else. So I appreciate you watching this video. Um, I'm so glad that you guys like Grant's segments. I really enjoy watching his segments as well. Um, continue watching my videos, please. Um, uh, your views um, make these videos more and more possible. So the more subscribers and views and likes and comments I get, the more motivated I am to film these videos. Um, so if you haven't already subscribed, please do that. Um, know that I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.